we're we're going to do three presentations today from the back of the Valentina, and so Jimmy's going to start us off. All right. What? I no longer care about my family because I'm gay. I personally never wanted to have children. I lived out that fantasy by writing torch on it. But the point is, I'm a human being. Therefore, I have these choices, and I should be allowed these choices. This quote by Harvey Firestein, spoken during a 2017 Playbill interview with Ryan McPhee, illuminate how the playwright lives out different lives through his writing. I chose this quote to start this presentation because it kind of gives you a sense both of the writing philosophy of Harvey Firestein and of the personal life of Harvey Firestein in like one night, three, seven, seven segments. Um, the goal of this presentation is to give you a better understanding of Harvey Firestein. In preparation for today's speech, I read the play Casa Valentina and read online articles, blogs, and interviews with Harvey Firestein, as well as watching some TV interviews. Um, I also would like to know that Harvey Firestein is so uh, integral to popular culture that I feel like I've had a subconscious education in all matters Harvey Firestein prior to this. Um, I'll be covering three main points. I'll begin with an interview of Harvey Firestein's life, uh, an overview of Harvey Firestein's life and career. I will then talk about his writing process, and finally I'll talk about his writing philosophy. So Harvey Firestein's career has been long and fruitful, but today we're going to look at the beginning of it. Um, despite giving hundreds of interviews during his venerated 40 year long career, I was unable to find one where Harvey talked about his beginnings. Um, I was finally able to find something on a site called Notable Biographies that states that he was the youngest of two sons born into a Jewish family in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Firestein attended the city's public schools. His father, Irving, was a handkerchief manufacturer, and his mother, Jackie, stayed home to tend to the kids and the household. Uh, the future playwright took creative writing in high school, but said he did not do well. What Firestein did do well in high school was perform and drag. As a 270-pound teenager, Firestein specialized in impersonations of the brassy voice Broadway musical comedy star Alvin Merman. I chose this quote because it really showcases how Firestein kind of got into drag and got into uh, writing plays and performing on a large scale. Um, Firestein then attended college in Brooklyn as a Pratt Institute. While he was in school, he made his acting de debut in Andy Warhol's only play of Pork as a lesbian cleaning woman, according to Frank Rizzo of the Hartford Court. I managed to find this tidbit about his father's reaction to his quick success as a woman in a 2012 interview with Melvin Parsi for Time Out Chicago. Firestein said, my father was brought up in an orphanage in the Catskills. He was a factory worker, and because his family wasn't there for him, family was everything. We could disagree inside the house, but outside the house, it was us against the world. So when I became a drag actor, he looked sideways, but said, okay. I chose this quote because I think it's an important contextualization of Harvey Firestein's early career. Um, growing up in the 80s as a queer teenager is never going to be easy. And I think what made the difference in Harvey Firestein's life was the support of his family. After this promising start, Firestein launched a career of tour de force performances and heartfelt scripts. As his biography on the CBS News website states, Firestein is one of the only a few people to receive Tony Awards in four different categories. Two in 1983 as Best Actor for, uh, in a Play and Author of Best Play for Torch Song Trilogy. A third in 1984 for the book, uh, the musical book Tony for writing the libretto of La Cage au Fou and the fourth in 2003 for Best Actor in a Musical in the divine role of Edna Turnblad in Hairspray. I chose this information to share with you because it covers some of his most notable achievements. Firestein is also known for writing the books for musicals such as Newsies and uh, Kinky Boots, as well as playing Tevye during the 2005 Broadway run of Fiddler on the Roof. He is also known for <laughs> a litany of movie and TV appearances, such as a recurring role on Cheers and a role in Mrs. Doubtfire. Now that we know a little bit more about Firestein, I'd like to talk about his writing method. Um, Firestein has always been an outspoken advocate for gay rights and has also taken a stance on many political issues. I would like to share with you three elements of his writing process, politics, humanism, and humor. Firestein is not someone to shy away from being seen as political in his writing. 
Uh, as he said in the 2004 interview with Susan Tooze of the New Times, I understand being scared after 9-11. I was scared too. We all were. We all wanted Daddy to come in and do the hard work for us and say that, that everything was going to be all right. But not at the cost of our rights. It's wrong that people can be arrested and put away and not see a lawyer. I'm talking about the Patriot Act. How can people get worked up over Janet Jackson's breast and not be concerned that 100 prisoners are staying in Guantanamo without ever seeing a lawyer? I chose this quote because even though it's not directly about Feierstein's playwriting abilities, it shows his, his lack of hesitance in talking about political issues. He is always talking about political issues, being an activist, and when it comes to playwriting, he often takes current events and put them into the play he's, he's writing. This both makes the play sort of like a historical timekeeping, like, hmm. The play talks about the era, and when you watch the play, like you watch one of his plays from the 80s today, you really get a sense of the political sort of ideologies of the time. Um, the outspoken political bent to his place often comes from his depiction of gay lives. As an activist during the AIDS crisis, Firestein wrote plays <laughs> that the community about the danger. As he said to Eric Hedges in a 2007 interview with the New York Post, well, in the AIDS crisis, I lost a great many people. I have ashes of three friends buried in my backyard, but I never had to face it alone. I don't know what that would be like to take something like this on, you know? What I do know is when I get back to this house and there's no one there. I chose this quote because it really showed how reality has shaped Firestein's writing process. Uh, Firestein has written a couple plays about AIDS, including safe sex, um, aimed at educating both his own community about the AIDS crisis and also the heterosexual community about the AIDS crisis. So this sort of political activism both comes from his personal life and is uh, uh, has a greater aim to change people's opinions. Uh, finally, I want to talk about Firestein's humor. With all the serious elements I've talked about so far, it could be really easy to assume that Firestein's plays are this sort of somber experience. However, they're actually very fun and funny and have a humor that just attacks you. You'll spend the whole play crying and laughing. Uh, with uh, John Wilson, in a 1988 article for the Los Angeles Times, describes Firestein's creative energy. He says that even off camera, Firestein is on. He hugs and mugs, he blurts out sexual innuendo, <laughs> he is the conscience and the clown, the heart and soul, the redoubtable creative force behind this very personal, personal vision of gay life in the 1970s, and he never lets up. I like this quote because it gives you a sense of Firestein's personality. It's this personality that really serves as a vehicle for most of his plays. It's both funny, but endearing, and also soulful. Um, now that you know a little bit about Harvey Firestein's writing process, I'd like to move on to my final point concerning his writing philosophy. Um, I want to explore why Firestein writes shows so political, uh, politically and why he often showcases drag. Uh, Firestein claims that he never came out that he was always known as queer, and he was always in. Um, Firestein has always had a personal philosophy about being honest about sexuality and letting it arise in his plays as well. As he said in the previously cited interview with Nova Parsi, I would never out somebody because it's a personal decision to come out, but I don't see living a lie. I remember at the beginning of my career, the press would almost beg me not to be out because they might have to write about it and talk about my partner as if we had a heterosexual relationship. It was absurd. I chose this quote because, again, it shows that Firestein was never really closeted. He was always very, very honest about sexuality. And I think that ties back into his family being a little bit more accepting of his identity. Um, he's written and talked about it multiple times, though. Uh, in this 2015 interview with Chris at the party uh, for Pridesource.com, Firestein said, when I did Barbara Walters on 2020 years ago, she acted like she had never met or seen a homosexual before, and you would have sworn, listening to her, that she had never even heard the word homosexual before. My philosophy has always been just be honest. You pay a heavier price for lying, for not having your dignity. Again, we see Firestein in this quote talking about being out. It, and it's not necessarily just a personal thing for him. It's a point of activism. If you're out and you're proud about being out, no one can kind of take your dignity away from you. Um, 
Finally, I was curious about why Fire Seed Flames incorporate drag so often. Um, from the same interview, Fire Seed speaks on drag. He says that drag is a part of every culture that we know of, whether it's Native American cultures or East Indian cultures or American, European, Old World, New World. There's a fascination with sexuality and there's a fascination we have of the opposite sex. The girl puts on a man's suit and feels a certain way. There's a certain empowerment that she's assigned subconsciously. Same thing with male to female. There's a certain power behind hiding who you are. I love this quote because it gets to the heart of why drag is so important to Harvey's shows. It's a sense of empowerment. It's a subversion of expectation, and it really gives Harvey a way to have his characters experience something new by experiencing something powerful. And really it normalizes drag to the audience as well. Um, the queer outspoken aspect of Fire Seed Flame philosophy really helps contextualize his works, including Casa Valentina. Uh, in conclusion, uh, today I talked about Harvey Firestein's life and career, writing process, and writing philosophy. What I'd like you to remember from